Hi, I'm Lisa Yamashita Lopez, president of the California Association of Mutual Water Companies, and you are watching Facets Television. I'm Kevin McDonald, and you're watching Facets Television. And this evening with us is Lisa Yamashita Lopez, the president of the California Association of Mutual Water Companies. Thank you so much for coming nice in. Meeting. I appreciate it. Yes, the, thank with you. all of the, the drought problems and so on, it'll be interesting to have you here this evening. And mm -hmm. really quickly, what I'd like to do before we go to there, I'd like you to tell me uh, about what is a mutual water company. Well, the way I typically explain how what a mutual water company is, is we are sort of the bedrock in history of how water was uh, brought to customers in California. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, many farmers migrated to uh, their piece of land and they needed to have irrigation. So they decided, okay, we're going to dig ditches and run pipeline to irrigate and supply water to their families. And that's really how it all began. So what they did is they formed kind of an association and said, okay, as people move into our area, we're going to give them a share to uh, be able to have water. Mm -hmm. So mutual water companies issue shares for water stock. Mm -hmm. And that's how that particular person receives water. So, so how does a mutual water company Im impact the end user? Um, a lot of folks do not understand the difference between mutuals and mm -hmm. the, the primary difference is mutuals are very unique because they're simply not for profit. Mm -hmm. So everything they bring in is simply to run their organization or to repair their infrastructure. Um, whereas a municipality um, they have access to public bonds, uh, tax income, uh, investor-owned utilities are for-profit, mm -hmm. so they are able to, you know, uh, have higher rates, and they're also governed by the Public Utilities Commission. And they're not really out for the mutual benefit of the consumer, they're out for the mutual benefit of themselves, that's right? Correct. I mean, that's primarily the issue. That's so how has the, the drought um, that we've been suffering for the last several years affected the mutual water companies in particular? It's been very dramatic. Um, generally speaking, mutual water companies are small uh, utilities. Mm -hmm. And being a small utility, you still have to comply with all of the same regulations that a large utility does. And once your revenue is cut because of conservation, it, I mean, you're, you're left with, you know, anywhere from, 20 to 50 percent reduction mm -hmm. and being able to survive on uh, less revenue creates a problem. It creates a problem with now you have to raise rates and the shareholders have to say, okay, this is a, another burden we're going to have to um, endure because it's cost sharing. So, you know, the drought has um, also compliance factors. The state of California will look at depending on um, if you are an urban water supplier and what that means is if you have so many connections that you fall into the urban water supplier so you're mandated to every month provide your production reports and tell the state what are you doing and where are you in your mm -hmm. conservation cutback mm -hmm. so they may mandate anywhere from 10 to 36 percent of a reduction and wow. that's very difficult to do. I can imagine, especially if you have a community that's already gone ahead and done the the conservation work prior to the announcement that this new requirement comes right. in because it's from that baseline, right? Right, exactly. Which makes so all of you that did the great work ahead of time, now you have to be that much that much lower and that, yes. that's interesting uh, I think from the perspective of I don't think they thought a lot about that. Yeah. So from the mutual perspective, explain to me what the association's role is in the mutual water community. What our role is, is, you know, we were formed in uh, November of 2013, and we were formed by general managers of mutual water companies mm -hmm. for mutual water companies. So we're a statewide organization, and we understand the components of what it means to be a small mutual and what kind of compliance factors we have to deal with. 
Um, so in a sense, you know, our primary focus is what we say, the voice of small systems. Mm -hmm. Many of the state legislators think that mutual water companies do not know how to operate. They say, well, you know, I think mutuals should be consolidated. Well, that's not really um, a fair statement because many mutuals are um, the source of water for rural areas. Um, even in, a, in some cases, the source of water for large cities. Mm -hmm. And so we were formed primarily because we were faced with some hostile legislations. Um, and so we formed together to say, okay, it's time that we have a voice. It's time for them to understand what mutual waters companies mm -hmm. are. So we made a, several visits to the Capitol and we were successful in amending quite a few bills that affected us. So yeah. For you, lobbying is, is critically important for small groups. And mm -hmm. I know even in the SMB tech market, we've gotten together over the years and had to you know, form up because as of right now, Google, Microsoft, Intel, those are the companies the government's listening to. And their interests are very different than ours, right? That's so I correct. could totally see the value of what, what you're doing as an association in carrying forward or carrying the water for. Um, your organizations to, to help them get their rights protected too. Yes. Right? So how how much of uh, how much success have you had in in your first couple of years? Oh, a tremendous amount of success. We were faced with probably I would say approximately five uh, pieces of legislation. We were successful in amending every one, and also we did uh, some historic legislation where we created new, a new assembly bill. Um, with the help of Christina Garcia and formed a Joint Powers Insurance Authority. Oh, great. And so that's the first of its kind ever. And so that was very exciting. Well, maybe it'll be a bellwether for, for other states having similar issues. Um, I know that we've had the substantial growth in the amount of water that we've had this year, but there is uh, ironically not a, anywhere to put it. Um, so how does the lack of storage or the policy of dumping fresh water down for the smelt, the delta smelt, trillions of gallons of water being flushed into the ocean for a fish that's this big that doesn't even really exist anymore. Yes. But anyway, um, how, it, how does the lack of water storage affect mutual? Well, it affects the mutual in the sense that mutuals do not have the capital mm -hmm. to make storage investments. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the, the successful pieces that we were able to do is uh, have mutual water companies as eligible applicants for the Prop 1 funding, which was oh, the okay. water bond. That I'm passed. familiar with that. That's great. And um, that uh, was not a process that mutuals were able to apply for. So when there now is a situation where a mutual, let's say, needs to build three additional reservoirs for storage, mm -hmm. they can apply for funding through that. And what our organization will do is help them with grant writing and technical assistance to to roll that out. So once again, that that carrying the water for the group. Um, interestingly enough, the small organizations that needed the money weren't the ones that were eligible for it, right? That's correct. And if you don't know how to play, you don't get to to, to get the money. So it's correct. it's really good to see an organization like yourself. What influence are you uh, having, or or do you have a charter to try to fight for more storage? Well, you know, with any uh, utility that's in need, you know, we consider ourselves to be people-to-people -people networking. Mm -hmm. We're really grassroots in the sense that we've made many trips around the state. So if there is an outreach to us to say, look, I really, I have these issues. I need storage. I need uh, new main lines. Can you help us? Mm -hmm. We'll go out there, meet with them, try to identify what we can do to help them, whether it's uh, with grant writing or perhaps uh, connecting them with a resource that we know that they may not know of. That's great. How's your membership outreach working for you so far? It's great. You know, we're, we're using technology uh, as an outreach, and we are physically using ourselves door knocking to outreach. Oh, and so that's, that's great. most successful because mutuals are small and they feel comfortable with one on one interaction. So with about the minute that we have left, I mean, if, you, if you're speaking directly to those that are not already part of your association, 
how do you encourage them to, to join up with you folks? Well, we encourage mutuals to join because it's simply for mutuals. We understand mutuals, and we are all general managers mm -hmm. of mutuals. So mm -hmm. we have the same pain and the same compliance that every other utility has. So the primary factor is be a member so that we can help you with infrastructure, uh, obtaining funds, technical assistance, insurance, risk management, and um, all those things that are very hard for the for any small business, right? For any small business. Yeah. Yes. Well, I want to thank you so much yes, for what you do you. and for coming in. Okay. I appreciate it. It's mm -hmm. actually fascinating to me. I think water is um, the future gold and the future oil of the world, and we better figure out a better way to manage it. And having folks like you at the helm of managing it is is good to hear. So I appreciate it. Thank okay, you very thank much. You. I'm Kevin McDonald. You've been watching Facets Television. With us today was Lisa Yamashita Lopez with the California Association of Mutual Water Companies, and thanks for watching.